Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, good welcome. You're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study, and we're so glad you could join us. But before we get into the Word, let's open up in prayer. (coughs) Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we can have joy in your presence, Lord, and we just thank you for the things that are going around us in our lives, Lord. Though they may not seem good, Lord, but we just know that they're working together for our good, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that your your purposes are being accomplished regardless of what's happening, Lord, and that you are in control, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. I'm glad to have you with us And as we continue our study in the book of Acts. So this morning, we're going to be moving forward, and we're going to be covering verses 8 through 15. But before we get into scripture, I'd just like to thank everyone that uh, was partnered and participates in this ministry by liking these episodes, by subscribing on a number of platforms that you can find a day of prayer on and by sharing it with others so they too can be blessed and grow in knowledge and relationship with our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. We we are definitely appreciative and thankful to the Lord for you and for your heart to help and I'll say participate in the work of this ministry and building the Lord's house and ensuring the gospel is preached throughout the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. And please continue to like, share, and subscribe. So you have been a blessing, and mm-hmm. and we do keep you in our prayers. Amen. And, and not just when we say that we ask the Lord to bless you and bless you abundantly for for your effort and your your work and coming alongside this ministry and your your participation, but we do pray for you and especially our partners daily. So thank you. And now, are we ready to get into the Word? Yes. Because that's why we're here. So... Mm-hmm. Can I get a volunteer to read Acts 6, verses 8 through 15, please? I will. All right, promise. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, disputing it with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, We apprentice speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place in the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Mm -hmm. So, as is our custom, we're going to open up the floor and give each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And then, of course, if you have any questions... To go ahead and ask them. All right? Okay. okay. So who'd like to begin? I will. All right, LaCharles? Um, the, f- the first thing I want to notice was, wanted to point out was, at this point, if we look further um, on in Acts, we see how when Paul, they accused Paul of bringing foreigners into the temple. That's what they bound him and dragged him before the council was. And what the Lord was pointing out here was at this point, first of all, we have to note that these also aren't Jews. These are people from different ethnic groups. And the Lord reminded me of how when Jesus said it was a Pharisee who rode across hard seas in order to proselytize one man and make him twice the son of a devil as himself. And he, the Lord should show me that this is clearly evident here. This is no longer just the people in power, the people who originally started this of taking people and inducing false witnesses. This has trickled down into different levels because of what they were doing. And how you see... 
all these, he also wanted to point out that with these people, it wasn't just a matter of, it was, they thought he was actually doing something wrong, but it was, they didn't like the way he spoke about it or the way he went about it. And also another thing, that this is a quick side, but also another thing the Lord pointed out was how they said he blasphemed, blasphemes Moses and God and how they relevated and put Moses first and saying this is of greater importance than what he's doing to God he's saying this against Moses and how they had their own twisted perception of who Moses was Moses was just a man yes he was used by the Lord mightily but he was just a vessel and a channel through which the Lord flowed And you can also see that further in verse 14 and how that's mm. what they brought up, that he was blaspheming. Well, that whole section of scripture, right, uh, from verses 12 through 15, if you look at that, all the accusations are against who? Jesus. Stephan. Yes, it's written, it's got a lowercase h for the him, right? And brought him to the council. They are, they are a twisting words that Jesus spoke and using it against Stephen, right? Yes. What does it say? For we've Especially heard. in verse 14, right? Um, that he will destroy this place and change the customs which... Moses delivered to us, right? Yes. But you can look at Matthew 5, 17. And he says, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And then he continues and says, For I say to you truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot, nor a stroke of a pen, or tittle, depending on the on the uh, translation will disappear from the law until everything is accomplished and he came to fulfill it right so clearly twisting jesus's words right yes but then it came from a well that was the desire of their heart but also what did jesus say in john 5 45 right do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, in whom you have put your hope. So misunderstanding what the Lord delivered to the people through Moses, in the same way they are misunderstanding what Jesus delivered to the people through the Holy Spirit, and what the apostles are delivering to the people. There are, there are always those that are going to choose to be in opposition. And it's unfortunate. Yes. And the Lord doesn't will that any should perish, right? Yes. But there are those that are going to choose to be opposed to the Lord. And he, the, Jesus warned us about this. Right? Yes. He warned us so that we do not lose hope. That we do not stop doing what he has called us to do and what he continues through his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us to say and to do, right? That's why we say yes. in this ministry quite often, say what the Father says to say and do what the Father does, right? Yes. yes. That's how we should live out our life. It matters. And in there is also a built-in opportunity for everyone to have the choice to come into agreement with the Lord, or to reject Him. So, but do we see that here? Yes. So there was a choice. They set up false witnesses. They're treating, well, just like Jesus had already prophesied, if they treat the Master this way, won't they treat the servants in the same way? And I paraphrase that, of course, of that scripture. But you're seeing it fulfilled right here. Again. Fulfilled, right? We just read about yes. that in chapter 5, right? How yes. they were mistreated. They were arrested. They were scourged and beaten, right? 
Yes. And you're seeing the same thing here. So. Hmm. Um, and something else I would, I was looking up the, the synagogue in particular to see, I'm, I'm sure there were some, some Jews there that weren't um, proselytes, but it says that um, in the King James, is, it calls it, instead of freedmen, it calls it libertine, and it says denotes Jews, according to Philo, who had been made captives of the Romans under Pompey, but were afterwards set free, and who, although they had fixed their abode in Rome, had built at their own expense a synagogue at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which they frequented uh, when in that city, the name liber Libertines adhered to them to distinguish them from the freeborn Jews who had subsequently taken up their residence at Rome. Evidence seems to have been discovered of the existence of a synagogue of the Libertines at Pompeii. Now, this is um, a concordance uh, with Greek translations, whatnot. So um, there was probably a combination of people, but... Yes. You know, just keeping in mind that because of the the dispersion, the diaspora, that there were Jews everywhere, but also there were people of other nations that did connect themselves and and participate in Judaism or convert to Judaism um, in various places. So it's unclear whether these were the actual Jews just of a different speaking language or a different um, country that they came from or if they were proselytes. But either way, thinking about this, Let's let's keep in mind that there is a spiritual world, mm -hmm. and yes. how can it be that people in two different lang in two different places that don't have Facebook and Instagram, that don't have a telephone, that don't have um, <laughs> was it TikTok or anything of that nature? They're Any saying, social media accounts, right? And they don't have instant access, are still saying and speaking with the same language. And the wording is almost identical to what it was in accusing, as you said, my love Christ, but in accusing the, the apostles as they were moving forward with the name of Christ, right? They're, they're preaching yes. the name of Christ. How can they talk the exact same way? Yes, they can ride a horse there and all of that, but the Lord made it very clear, you're speaking by your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, the devil is not in every place all at one time, but he's a spiritual being. He can travel. And so... It says that very plainly. He roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Amen. And thinking and remembering that the spirit of the Antichrist was and is in the world. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, the spirit behind this problem is speaking through the people. So the people aren't necessarily the issue. Now, certainly no one should yield themselves as a tool of the adversary, but um, the Apostle Paul, as the Lord revealed to him, makes it clear um, through the Holy Spirit. Our, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood because I think it must have dawned on him. Like, how can I be in this location? And you're saying exactly the same thing to me that these people said. You're doing exactly <laughs> the same thing that these people did. And even sometimes like um, I can say present tense, when I watch things that are happening in the world around me and I'm observing like, OK, that I see you moving, Lord. Or, or then when I see the adversary moving, I'm like, how come their faces all look the same? How come they're making the same facial expression? How come they're using the exact same language? Attitudes, and I'm, and actions, and all and I the have above. To, right. And I have to recognize and go beyond, oh, you called each other on the phone or something. Because how could you verbatim remember it? Well, well, it's the spirit let's, let's behind it this. that's speaking. I'll give, let's give another example. They, as in the people, began to get physical, Right. Yes. Okay. Where have we seen that before? Jesus. How about way back in Genesis 4? The Lord spoke to Cain and says, oh. and gives him wisdom and the path and plan ahead. Right? And he also gives him a role. And he says, yep, sin lies at the door, but you should be master over it or rule over it. Right? Yes. But yet he resisted the wisdom. And rose up and killed his brother, Abel. Right? Yes. So, so, aren't we seeing the same thing here? But then let's also look at one other point. In spite of everything that is going on, and this is why it's so important to be led by the Holy Spirit, in verse 15, 
All right? In the face of all the opposition, how does it describe Stephen or Stephen? Stephen, Stephen. That the face is of an angel. Oh, okay. Well, how is that possible? Except that the glory of the Lord is shining through him. In spite of all the opposition and all everything that the adversary is trying to do, he is still maintaining his composure. He, you can still see the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, flowing through him. He's still holding on to, right, as it says in verse 8, he was full of faith and power. Power, as Paul described it, right, the Apostle Paul, should, should I come with, did I come in convincing words, or, do, or did I come in authority and power? So seeing the evidence, the moving, the working of the Holy Spirit in and through, well, as we were describing Paul, but in this case, we're describing Stephen. You're seeing that in action, or we're reading about it in action and reading the description given in the fa- the literal face of all this opposition in the natural by the people but also in the spiritual realm from the adversary which is what satan or satan means adversary okay Okay. Yes. Everybody, everybody, see that? Understand that? Yes. Well, well, to your point, <clears throat> these uh, people of the synagogue, the freedmen, mm-hmm. um, rose up for the purpose of disputing mm-hmm. Stephen. Yes. And when they were unsuccessful, they moved to attacking him with falsehoods backed up by people they coerced to lie. Exactly. So I mean, it's pretty clear what the, the spirit was. It wasn't even they considered what he had to say. They came in with an agenda. And, and I, I like your reference to Cain and Abel because it's right in there with it. This is just a clear rejection. I'm not willing to receive wisdom or truth. I don't like it. I don't like the way it makes me feel. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to make my own decisions. And I don't care what it says, any basis in logic or wisdom or truth. I'm going to cut it down because I want what I want. An attempt to remove, I'll say, the standard. Right? But what's the standard? How was Stephen living? Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, a man ab- above reproach, right? Or of good yes. reputation, filled and moving by the leading of the Holy Spirit in his life, in every area and aspect of his life, which is why he was, I'll say considered, but chosen for the role. And, and who chose him? The Lord did. Clearly the Lord and the people came into alignment and agreement with the Lord's choice. And that was one of the Lord's choices for that time, right? Yes. But you also see, and this is a, a, a key point, Stefan didn't say, okay, well, now that I've got the role, now that I'm in leadership, let me shirk off or not listen to the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Let me not be led and do my own thing, right? Let me depart. Yes. He maintained his relationship and his walk with the Lord. And as we had read, right, in Galatians, living by the Spirit and walking by the Spirit. And you see the the fruit and evidence of that. Or see it. We're reading about it. But it was definitely observed by all who were there. Both those that are, were around, and those that had risen up in opposition, as you pointed out, brother. It was evident to all. The Lord makes his choice noticeable, distinguishable. He always lets people see the difference. So we, then, people should be able to see the difference in us. It should be distinguishable in us to uh, all those that are in opposition 
and those that are, I'll say, receptive. Right? Yes. Doesn't, doesn't Paul say something to that effect? You are our epistle, read by all, all men. All men. Okay. Do we see the consistency here with the Lord? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? I have something. All right, sir. <clears throat> okay, so first when I was talking about the synagogue of freed men, it reminded me of inside of Acts 19 with the riot at Ephesus. Ephesus. Okay. And how the main reason for the riot was because the people who started the riot they thought they're tri- they're gonna lose their trade and lose something, and they're because they're being greedy. And so, Lord, remind me of every time that something hap, every time that a movement of the enemy happens, it's because that there's something found inside of the instrument that they've allowed to fester and grow. And the Lord showing me inside of this case was jealousy, and how. Be- because they saw that he was doing science, they said, no, he can't be doing this because we can't do it ourselves. Hmm. Okay, so a couple things, right? In Acts 19, it begins at verse 21. But, so we'll just give a little context for the listeners, right? Their trades were silversmiths, right? Yes. And what were they doing? They, the silversmiths, we're building or creating structures of silver to a false god. Right? Yes. That is how they were making their money. And this individual, Demetrius, got the other people in that occupation, that trade together. Stirred up. Stirred up. Well, hey, what do you know? We see the similarity here. Right? Stirred up the people and put them in a place of fear. Well, wait a second. Perfect love casts out fear. But the people latched on to the fear that they wouldn't have their needs met as a result of provision. And given the history of what Demetrius was saying, which was, hey, Paul has gone around to many places and he said persuaded people or convinced them, right? Right? But what what do we already say about Paul? I didn't come in persuasive speech, right? Or manner of speaking. I came in power and authority. They, just like with Christ, saw the evidence, right? The signs, the wonders, the miracles, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that is what people, I'll say, what helped convince them. Right? But we see that same thing with Christ. It says, for which of the words? Right? And if you don't believe the words that I speak, then believe the signs and the wonders, right? Yes. Okay. Faith and works. I'll show you my faith by my works. It's not just the words that are spoken, it's the actions, the behaviors, the attitude, nature, character, attributes, as well as the power of the Holy Spirit, all working. As one, right? Consistent yes. throughout. Yes. So, does that help clarify your point a little bit there, sir? Yes. All right. I think that was just important for the listeners, just so they had some background. And yes, we're going to cover that in detail when we get to that point. But it goes to what we have been discussing here in this episode about you see in every place, right? For those that would submit to the enemy and how the enemy tries to move and attack, you see the the similarity. All right, I'll say I'll say it in this way. There's a battle for consistency. All right? Yes. The Lord is asking us to be consistent in everything, every area and aspect of our lives. Right? Yes. yes. Where the enemy is trying to get people to be consistent in inconsistency. So there is no rhyme or reason. No one can plot a course. But the Lord provided it, the course, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
So choose him that it may be well with you and your children and your children's children right down to the third and fourth generations, right? Yes. yes. So I just want to encourage you with that today, right? Let's not get hung up on what the enemy's doing because our Lord is greater and stronger and more powerful than any and everything that you could even think or imagine, right? So let's not be dismayed, but let's put our faith, our hope, and our trust in him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, can I, let's pause there. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today and for your ultimate word, Lord, that we that it provides life and light to the hearers and the readers, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your patience with us, Lord. We thank you that you provide it all, Lord, that you've given us all provision. You've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, Lord. So we thank you for all the help that you've been, Lord, and the help that you will be, Lord. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus that covers us. And we just thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus' name. In the Lord's name, amen. 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 We love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.